and good morning to those who are in China. Welcome to We Working Women live stream. I'm Vera Tui, the CMO of We Working Women, with a mission of inspiring personal, professional, and business growth through unity and community. We Working Women connects subscribers and partners around the world with the model We achieve, we empower, we impact. First launched as a WeChat blog in October 2015, We Working Woman has rapidly evolved into a vibrant media platform and digital community of readers, contributors, and corporate partners. We connect online through content and conversations as well as offline throughout events, professional development, workshops, and speaker series. Nowadays, We Working Women has been ranked as North America's leading digital company that connects and showcases global Chinese women's capabilities and influences. Tonight in our live stream, we're thrilled to have Julia Marantet from Longueuil, Quebec. Hi, Julie. Please allow me to introduce you to our Chinese audience. Do you, do you want to say hi to our Chinese uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi, audience. Hi. <laughs> did, did I see your name right? Yeah, it's Julie. Julie Marantet. That's perfect. Yes. Julie. Okay. So Julie currently works as a human relationships agent with people with physical disabilities. That's for two years and autism for 15 years and intellectual disabilities for 15 years. Last year, she worked with children aged from six to 17 years old for social services. She's a five-time Canadian national champion, gold medal in volleyball, and has been coaching volleyball at the high school and elementary school levels for more than 10 years. Julie is a single mother of two children, and she holds an MBA from University Laval, a BA in psychology from St. John's University in New York, and a certificate in educational psychology. The common thread in all this is her love for children. In her book, I, had, I had need your help for the name, Julie. Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia and Peter. <laughs> That's a mermaid story. I'm going to show you the, the thumbnail, the, you know, the picture of this book. It's a beautiful book. She has adapted Henderson's story, the mermaid story, to our time by elevating the social roles of young girls and challenging stereotypes by having a black prince as the main character. Her main objective in writing this story is to bring harmony to people, especially children. She wants them to stay connected to their inner world and to the wonder of children, childhood throughout their entire lives. So tonight, we're excited to have Julie here to talk about her personal and professional journey and share how meditation can liberate you from trauma and pain and learn about the visualization tools that enable victims of abuse to gain a sense of power over their abusers. So Julie, let's start the conversation. I can't yeah. wait to start the conversation with you tonight. Well, first of all, thank you for receiving me and thank you uh, for the audience for listening also to be here uh, tonight. It's a pleasure uh, for me to be to be here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So when I was out, me and Julie was talking a little bit before the live stream, I felt really connected with Julie. Julie is from Quebec. I was in Quebec for over five years. And I felt like, you know, like we were really co connected. And I'm really like meeting someone from my hometown. <laughs> in Chinese, it's called Lao <laughs> Xiang. So I'm meeting a Lao Xiang. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So, um, Julie, it seems that um, you have many titles. You know, you're a volleyball champion. Like, how could that be? And you're doing psychologies and you're writing a book. You have so many titles and experiences in so many different areas, you know. But could you tell us some highlights of your career as a volleyball coach? I really wanted to know that part, like being a champion, gold medal champion and a volleyball coach. Um, well, first of all, um, I'm a good coach because I had very good uh, coaches before that taught me. So I have that work ethic. 
Um, I've been coaching the last 10 years and my, I have two main goals when I get into gymnasium. The first one is because a lot of female athletes stop or reduce um, the sport movement when they get to the age of 16. So my goal is really to stimulate uh, that they love the game. They love to be in the gym and they're moving. So I, I, I have groups. I had groups of 10 years old uh, before uh, I coached male, uh, female, mixed group, private lessons, group lessons, or, and also I coaches, um, I, I can be called to go for a, a group of coach for a school if they want to get better. So I do, I do all various of types of coaching, but my two main goals is get the girls to love the game. And also if they're tall, Uh, it's more difficult for them to get good. So be patient, be more, I'm always cheering. I'm always talking in the gym. It's, how, it's very fun. Uh, so that's my main goal. My second goal is I'm there for their self-esteem, uh, basically because they're growing up, they're building their self-esteem. So any decision in or off the court, the, the court is made really to build their self-esteem. Um, I have a few examples because uh, I started coaching maybe five years ago, a group of nine to 12 years old. It's called mini volleyball. So uh, we did that for uh, two years with them. And after they went to high school and I had this 15 year old girl that came back this, um, I think it was in uh, October. She just lost her her coach didn't come back for the volleyball and she was on the B team. So the second level of uh, volleyball and she was really disturbed. She was broken down because she had no more volleyball to go play. So she went to a club team and over there, the, the, like the, the parents called me up because they were like, she's broken down. What can we do? But we remember your stories because when I go in the gym, I, I always tell my story. I was the person that played only two months of volleyball. And after that, the coach like took somebody that was taller and left me out for a year. And I came back. So I, I tell them, the coach has a vision. You have your own vision inside. You have to listen to yourself. The coach will see you in some position and another coach will see you in another position. It doesn't mean that if he sees you as a good, like a hitter, it doesn't mean like you're not good defense. Like the other coach could see you a good defense. And that's important that they know that because you're going to go through different types of coaching. And at one point you're going to be benching and you need to like put your game higher and stuff like that. So I was telling the, the also that they need to, um, to have more courage. So that person, when they came back to the gym and they asked for private lesson, I was like, no problem. I know where you are. I'm going to take care of you when you're, when you're going to be finished with me, you're going to have trust. You're going to know the game and you're going to be a very better person. So we did two months of private coaching twice per uh, twice uh, per week. And that was during the confinement. She went back. She was named captain, had her trust back, and she was the best player of her team. So we really can make a difference, like as coaches. And um, she was level two and she made the, the, the club team. So there was a... So for, for me, that's like my mission is accomplished. If I can do that, that's very good. So that's one little one person. But um, during confinement, I coached six of them. And I had also another mission was um, a six year, uh, six foot six young uh, boy came over. He was 16 years old and he um, he wanted to play volleyball, but had no experience at all. So my boss came to me. He's like, can you take him? I'm like, sure, I can. So the first 15 minutes, I was like, okay, I'm just going to see what's your abilities and stuff. And I, I realized, okay, we have none of volleyball, but we have athletic uh, abilities. So it took me two months to uh, bring him back to uh, that he could play with a group. And now he's going to play college level, which is like not even six months later, he got recruited So it's basically um, stuff that I can do like, like that. I can play any level coach, but I'm looking like very much to better the self-esteem, get them to believe in themselves, get them to better the game. And yeah, that's, that's what basically I do. <laughs> yeah, because I know that um, 
a really good coach, no matter what you're coaching, is always a good life coach, right? Yeah. Whatever you're coaching, you're not just coaching them for the skills. You're also coaching them to help them how to face problem, how to do problem solving, how to suit themselves to the situation, right? And pick themselves up and, and get along with their life. So yeah. I'm really happy to hear your story because you did a really good job for not just volleyball coach, but you really help them in, in their life journeys. Yes. And, and I also remember one thing that I did when uh, I had a group of 10 to 12, at one point I, I brought them a little key uh, with uh, something to attach. And I, I, at the beginning of the practice, I just told them, I want you to remember when you're going to be a teenager, this little key is the solution. So what do you think it is? And they were like, ah, I don't understand. I'm like, well, you are the solution. So you're the key to any solution, any problem. So they, so they could put it on their t-shirts and uh, it's building the trust of yourself. Yes. So yeah. little things like that. It's, it's little, but it builds so much for them. And they were impressed. I have a little key on the solution. Um, and they're so young. We have to build it as such like a, a young level and everything. So that's, that's another like a little things like that, that I do that can make a difference. Yeah, very true. So what inspired you to make this decision to work with people with physical disabilities, you know, autism and intellectual disabilities? So what 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 make you do that? Um, 20 years ago, when I was in, uh, in Montreal, I was I was working in a um, life insurance company and after three years of uh, working there it made no sense for me I, I i had no more connection i needed to be with the people i i study a ba in psychology and i was like okay let me go back to the field i haven't really worked with them but let me go and see what i can bring to the people so i decided to apply to a readaptation center at that point but it was for more, more uh, neglected, abused uh, children or children and teenagers living in readaptation centers or foster, foster home. So I, I got the job and I really felt like the connection. And after a certain, like maybe a, a year, I went to this uh, house that's called Rainbow Home. And over there, there was teenagers that had an intellectual disabilities. And I started working with them and it was just love 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 they're just full of love and you can just give more back it was such a great exchange and and we had to teach them independence but when you love the people you're working with is just so easy so that's how I started working with them and I got a, a a permanent job with them and after three years the home was closed and it was transferred to uh, it's called crdi which is another readaptation center so i decided you know what i really love th these people i love uh, when i'm working with them it's always fun it's always a good challenge so i applied to get a job over there and i did get the job however uh, when i was there uh, they had all these different houses and they decided um uh, to send me to a, re a readaptation center for kids from zero to five that had autistic kids. And so uh, it, it wasn't more like at that point, it was, I was five years with them. And their greatest challenge when they had no services, let's say you have a four year old uh, kid that had no services, half of the four years, autistic kids, they did not communicate. They were, uh, they couldn't talk they were talking in their own language and stuff. So um, our, our goal was in a couple of months to teach them how to communicate. So that was a, such a like, good lesson to know how they think differently and how to uh, teach them to communicate. So I love that part. It was great to learn to build a trust and to go also in their universe because they have their own interests, their own universe. And when you go there, it's so easy to bring them to learn the life uh, issues, life things that they need to learn, routines and all that stuff. So I did that for five years. Mm -hmm. And after there was at the same place, at the same readaptation center, there was like an opportunity to go work 
uh, with the autistic kids and also with disability people, but more as a clinical like expert that would go see what their needs are to, um, I'll be working with them. Sometimes it would be to look at their file, but, or to evaluate them, see if they need a home, if they have suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. So it, all different kinds of needs and basically to uh, send them to the right program in our like readaptation center. In the last three years, that center added also the physical disabilities. So I was also able to work with them too. Wow, that's a lot. Like, I think it takes a person a lot of strength, like a inner strength to work with people, you know, with dis disabilities, no matter is it physical or it's like intellectual disabilities, right? Because like I have like one of, I have three kids. One of my ch children, he has, he was not like really diagnosed as autism. Mm -hmm. um, he is like, I took him to a lot of like a specialist because like growing up, he's six years old now, like six, six and a half now. Right. And yeah. I've been talking to a lot of mom who has like autism kids and um, like they all have different level. And I know that autism, they have different levels. It doesn't always have to be kids that has like extremely like close up, don't talk at all. Um, sometimes it, it, it's kids that they talk, maybe they don't talk well, but they have their own world, like what you said. And it's really hard to get into their brain, get into their world. And you yeah. never get to know them. And because you can't understand them, you, you get them, you know, like angry or rejected all the time. And then they feel like you don't understand me. Right. Yeah. So I, I have a child like that. So he's so far he's still not diagnosed as autism, but I think he still have like a lot of symptoms. He was like, um, like doctor specialist doubt he has autism because like he has so many symptoms. But um, so I can understand it takes a, a lot of love and patience to work yeah. with them. But once you really sit down and get to know them, it's really beautiful. Because you, you see that they, they have so many imaginations in their mm -hmm. head, right? Yes. You have to love the difference. That's what it is basically. And to love also to go in their universe. When you go in your, their universe, that's when you build a trust. And the more they trust you, so let's say they're, because there's three characteristics of autism that you need to have. You have um, uh, like difficulty socialization and you have difficulty with communication and you have also um, it's rigid patterns. Like, um, so you have those to have to be autism, you have to have those three criteria. But it, it's basically when you go in, if they love video games, well, you have to play video games with them. So when you're doing that, you're building this trust. And after you can take the video games and bring it in life. Like if you need them to do the washing thing, okay, what, what would Fortnite this person think about doing this and this button? Do you think it would, I don't know, like not say kill, blah, 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 but you, you have to go in their universe and bring it back. So it's very creative to do that. Like it's very, very, me, I love difference. Uh, like it, 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 I think it makes us a better world mm -hmm. and we need to learn from each other. So that's for me, I like it. So it, it's easy for me to go and to put the effort in Mm -hmm. and, and and you always get rewards and it, it's heart rewards I know. And, and yes yeah and they always remind remember you they always welcome you you know that feeling is is very precious yeah mm, yeah yeah so the let's talk about this book you make I'm wondering that's that's how I connected is that connected to your experience working with this group that's how you cre created this book um, no, it's a, uh, it basically it's, I was reading, I was reading all the time Anderson, Chris Anderson's book when I was a, a kid, but I was reading it like mostly every day. I was like obsessed with mermaids, but I, I figured out this book doesn't have a good ending. It's really a tragic one. So I, I was like, we need to do better books for young kids and, uh, not have, a, because the, I don't know if you remember the ending, but she, 
the, the prince goes out with somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And she goes back in the water and lets herself go in, you know? So I was like, we need a better ending and we need to have better books that will uh, give better social roles for our kids and especially young girls. Um, so that was my first thing. And the other thing is that uh, we need also to have um, like a black prince to bring uh, a nobility back also to black people to difference. So my, my, I was like, we need to have very much different books than what we have right now. So I'm like, let me create one that will do that. So when we, when we uh, look at the book, Cassiope, uh, she's a mermaid and she falls in love with this man, which obviously is black. And on her 15th birthday, um, she sees him drown. Uh, drown? <laughs> Help me. Drown, so, yeah. Yeah, so so basically she goes and help him. Obviously, there's a there's a princess over there that doesn't that think that she was drowning the prince. So she basically sends her soldiers. So Cassiopeia runs out to the water. She has a battle with these, and this uh, princess puts a magic potion on the 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 mouth of the the prince. So he falls in love with with her instead of Cassiopeia. But she decides to. She wants legs. So obviously the family is going to be against that. Uh, when you have a very good project, sometimes the close people close to you, they're not, they want to keep you close. So they don't want you to go outside. And so you might feel that sometimes like, so, so she decides to go see the sea witch uh, at that point. And um, the sea witch, like they have a, a talk and everything. They look at books, magic books and family. Um, Ariana uh, gives her a mission. If you bring back the fire of the dragon, and if you bring back the Stella Maria gem, uh, which is a precious uh, uh, crystal, if you bring that, um, first of all, we'll light up the cauldron of the, the, the fire here, which has special ingredients that will bring you your legs. And if we have that also, maybe Ariana can take some also for her. So there's also... They're like bringing a good connection. And um, she gives out, Ariana gives out a sword to Cassiopeia. And that's a very good moment at that point. Because if you look at our books right now, there's no books where you see a young girl that takes a sword. Yeah. And if you look at the symbolic of the sword, the sword is um, the empowerment. It's the spiritual sword. It, it also symbolizes that she can go until the illumination. It, it's the strength. It's the power. It's the uh, the power of the verb. It, it, it is so much. And in the past, it has always been given to men, but not to women. So me, that's like a very important thing that we need to bring more. Young girls can go to the highest level and even more. They can go to until the spiritual illumination. So that's in the book. And we're, if they're reading it often, they're, it goes into the unconscious. So it's very good. So that's one of the things. And also she, she says, you have to, well, bring back the light, bring back the Salamaria. So she'll have to fight the dragon. So basically we're, we're going to new roles for Cassiopeia. And um, I, and also, like, I'm not going to say the whole story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to tell all the stories. No, we want them to read the stories. Yeah. Yes. And, and there's other stuff. Like, she'll have to trust herself. And uh, so I think it's a very good book that will implement good values for young girls. Young mother will want their girls to be reading that. Yeah. And, and it, it has a lot of symbolic um, I, I worked three years on it, like part time to really um, make it better, a better story for our, our youth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Julie, being a very sweetheart, she actually mailed the book <laughs> to me. <laughs> so I actually have the hard copy book with me. And it's really, really beautiful. I, I read the book and she wrote, she wrote, she signed for me. And it's very inspiring. And I can't wait to read this with my kids tonight. Yay. I, I didn't get to because I was at the event yesterday. <laughs> but uh, I can't wait to read everything. 
Um, you know, for me, because I read, I have young kids, so I always read those all those fairy tales with my kids, right? And um, uh, oftentimes, when I read the very old version of the fairy tales, they're all like, "Oh, that's a very sad story," and they always tell me. But I'm really happy that nowadays, so many different versions of the fairy tales coming up. So, so then they know that there is not just one ending of each story. You can make your own story. You can make your own ending, and that's really beautiful, right? That was the whole purpose. You you just resume everything to create your own like beautiful ending, create、yeah. your own life and everything. Yes, yes, yes. So so tonight we are getting to know you and your work. You know, working as a human relationships agent. Um, you know, focusing on how meditation can liberate you from you know the trauma and pain.、Um, so. How how did you ever like started this whole like meditation journey yourself?、Um, well, meditation has been a part of、uh, my life for a very long time.、Um, I'm a very like spiritual person, so、I、always take time to breathe to、um, pray.、Uh, so that's been、um, I, I'm from a Catholic、um, family, so we would go to church. But me, I would I would connect with the prayer, so I, I really like to be、um, to have those words to connect more inside. So that was that was a a good way to do that. And when you're in sports, also when you're playing, you're not talking like you're you're going inside, you're breathing more and everything. So it's your and your mental is going off. So you're kind of meditating. So I, I started like that, and、um, basically I'm meditating、uh, every day, mostly, and especially is on week weekends, and、uh, it, it's a part of my like my because when you're meditating, you're connecting more to yourself, and you're receiving better answers to yourself. So it, it's a part of、uh, of my life right now. Yes. So and- your. The 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 sessions you are offering now,、uh, the visualization、um, while you are doing meditation,、um, how how does it work? Why you need to visualize、um, while you you know meditate, and、okay. how how does it connect with you know like healing your trauma and pain? Okay, perfect.、Um, well, the first of all, the brain doesn't、uh, know what is real and what isn't. So when you're、uh, as an as an example, they they has they has been studies where Olympian or would、uh, only visualize or a group would only visualize a group would only do the sports and the other one would do both of them and they'd be a control group and they notice that when you're visualizing something. It's fifty percent done. So already, that's doing like half the work. And、um, basically, I decided because the this visualization is about、um, I I call it, it's about sexual trauma, but it can be used for any trauma, any violence, any.、Um, it, 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 we'll talk more about that. But I was feeling more that.、Um, Uh, because there are so many people that have、uh, triggers and that had that bad experience of a sexual abuse,、um, I wanted them to have a tool, a tool that would make a change,、uh, and the tool that would be offered at home. So, because sexual trauma is a very delicate subject, and it's something、uh, that is so painful. Um, it, it, it basically, I, I would compare it to a train. You're getting、um, when you have a sexual trauma, you're getting a train just passed you over. So that's how it breaks the person. It's a very good image. If you had a life before, you don't have your life. You might be in the hospital after. You might be in a psychiatry, or not. Some people just don't ever talk about it, and that, it depends on how the trauma was. Also, was it when you were a kid? Is it an adult? Was it done? Like, I, I know it's a difficult, difficult subject, but was it done with also a weapon? Was it a, a gun, knife? Was it done also by a stranger or person close to you? So all, all of that is all different situations,、uh, 
Um, so that uh, altogether is very painful. So some people will never talk about it. Some people will get help and everything is good. So me, I wanted to do a tool that you would have at home and it's a visualization. So I'm talking, I'm basically, um, we're like helping you connect with nature first. And that's very like soft and very good. And after I'm learning you how to breathe in your stomach, in your uterus to reconnect already. And I'm there with you. So that's very securing. Also, um, when you have a sexual trauma, obviously the body was impact. You were put to the ground as an example, you, you know, it, 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 and that position in life after, if somebody talks the way, or, or it's, it, if there's a trigger about the situation, there's a reaction in the body. And sometimes we have victim position. It's unconscious, but we do have that. So we've noticed with the psychology that we need to undo this position in the body and the visualization is bringing that it, it, it brings you up and also I'm bringing also back the sore the spiritual sore because when you have a trauma it's a journey that we need to resolve we need to get the power back from the person that took that and we need to so I'm there with you And we're basically taking the spiritual star, which means justice, which means power. We need a better justice for ourselves. We're going to take that as ourselves, and we're going to empower ourselves. We're going to be um, so the spiritual star is given through the visualization, and it's a it's an honor to feel that in your hand. And after, I accompany you to to cut also part of a, the abuse. And when you do that visualization for just for one day, it, it, it clears out out of the physical body. It, it does some uh, clearing. And we had it tested with a few women and it was right after they had a, something that was going off and they felt so much better. They had more mo movement after in their life. Because if you get ran out by a train, you're down. You're, you're, you, you don't have any more universe. Like it's such a, it's such a painful experience. It breaks you down. Like it, in our like uh, life center, we have, we bring kids, we bring life, we bring our life, we bring everything. So any abuse there is such uh, devastating and, and, and it stops you. It, And, and basically, like um, the abuser, one part of them wants to take your power. And with this visualization, we're taking it back. But we're going one, one step further. Because if you had therapy, you did so much. But you might still have fear. You might have still trigger. You might be still using like medication because you're going through your day and stuff. We want to bring you to another level so that you uh, are able to... Um, heal even more profound that mm -hmm. abuse and and we'll know in like a, after a few months how it like where it can bring other peoples because if there's a lot of people that are doing that just for trauma just for like sexual abuse for vi violence verbal violence or it, it's going to change people people are taking back their internal power and, and it's going to make a switch so that's a For me, it's a, it's a good tool to put out there. Yes. I think um, the way how um, meditation, because meditation is very private, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's not, um, it's, it's a very private process that you are having a conversation with yourself. Um, I think um, when, when we have meditations, it's more like, to get our past pains and traumas emerged um, from the hidden place. Because we people tend to hide our pain and trauma. I, I believe everyone had a certain level of, you know, like abuse or pain or like even verbal abuse, mm -hmm. or even you had a fight, you know, somebody like your husband or your, even your, you know, your friends are try to fight over you. It's, it's kind of like, Like you said, it's like a power move 
that it's kind of causing a pain to you, but you still try to hide it. We try to bury it, but it's not the best solution. The best solution is we, we need to heal it. Yes. And, and if you're always hiding, it's going to pop up at a moment where you don't want it to pop up. So we're giving you a sp spiritual sore. It's not to kill the other person. It's not to do that. It's to destroy the vision that was there. So it's a very peaceful way to up sh like shift yourself and become more empowered inside. So that's uh, it's and, and the other thing is I suggest that we do this program for 21 consecutive days. So that might be hard at the first time. So you might start one or two days, then stop because it, it, it's, um, it's a difficult, it, it, it causes changes and we don't like to be changed and change has to be slow. Huh? It's like a little baby, we go slowly, we take care of it. So if it's a too, like a too big change, we're not gonna make the change. So we have to listen to ourselves. We're going to make the 21 days, but it might take one, two or three time to, to, to try it. And it's all fine. If, if you're having too much like trouble, you just do it when you can. And that's fine too. But when you do it 21 days, the first seven days is like a, like a trauma that's getting released from like the body. And the seven more days is like the mental. And after the seven is like the spirit. So that's why we say 21 days. If you want to go a little higher, like a, I, I think the Buddhists would say 108 days would be a complete, like a whole world change. But we can start slowly. You can go um, one one day, two days, or 21 days. You you you're your own boss. You mm -hmm. go. You do what you can slowly and with the softness also. Yes. So I feel like because um, I download your um, the visualization session, the audio. Uh, so I tried one day. <laughs> so it, I know that for the very first day, the, the, like my feelings is I feel like because um, in the voice, it says a lake, right? In the water. So I feel like my whole body is really relaxed. And it's really like I'm trying to get trying to see through my trouble, like my troubles and my pains through. Mm -hmm. I think that's the very first day. I think we do need to practice this more. It's not just one session, like one meditation can solve a big trauma that, you know, you had in the past. It, it did need a lot of practice. Yes. And, and while you're doing the meditation, it might be the first day, one thing that pops out. And the next day again, so you want to work that. But if it's every day is a different one and you're going through it, it's perfect. You're cleaning different things. I, I, we just need to go through the process and see what's bringing out. If one day there is nothing, it's okay. Sometimes we're working stuff and we think there is nothing, but there is still something that's happening in the body, but we're not aware of it. So, yes. So, So that I think it's a very good tool to um, and it, and it as an example, if you have a hundred monkeys that are learning to peel out an orange, and the hundred one monkey will know after a hundred. So if we have a group of women that is changing and taking back their power, and in a peaceful way, we're going to have a, a very like a humanity change. We're gonna, because this, these trauma, we're like, it's done. We've known about it. Now we're in their power. We know from inside, it's never gonna happen again. Eh, eh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is my, my belief. Yes. And, and I think we can be the change. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so so the, the, like, why is this so important, you know, to learn about visualization tools? Why we, do we need those tools that enable victims, you know, of all the abuses to gain a sense of power, you know, over their abusers? Well, um, me personally, I've seen so many women's children and men be uh, sexually abused. So, and I've seen some people get help and some people not getting the help or not wanting the help. Everything is fine. But I, I believe that we definitely need to um, like take some tool, take this tool to make a switch, to take the trigger off. Because if you have a trauma and uh, 
every day you have little stuff you might get mad for a, a little something uh, you, it, it's troubling you at certain points so we want to get to be better person for each other but, and also empower we don't want to be um, because of a trigger still the victim of somebody because he has the same voice or the same height of that person that abused us we want to gain that power by seeing that vision of abuse and like doing the exercise with the sore and everything so after when we come back this is not gonna it's it's not gonna affect us we're gonna be so much better inside so it's basically we're gonna do a better world for each other and, and we definitely need to um to talk about this to to make a change because it's it's a lot of people that are affected by this as an example sexual trauma it's a lot of people Yes, and uh, we all know somebody that was um, that had a sexual trauma, and um, so and there's a lot of men also. It's not it's a lot of women. It's a lot of men also, and it's a lot of children, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So and, and the visualization for children, when because I had experience with adults that had it when they were young, and when you're children, you usually you put it aside you you don't you can you don't have the tools if nobody is there and has like a scene that it went on you're going to put it aside so you need tools later on to to open it up and and not to fall as if a train passed you over it could happen also at that point you know so the visualization can help slowly to to open that window yeah so i think for our past pain and experiences, we have to face it. Yes. You know? I think it's a really important process that we, we take it out and heal it. Because I, I do really agree with you that if we don't um, heal it, it will affect people around us. Yes. That would bring this pain and somehow it will affect people that we love now around us you yes. know people you work with people in your family you, you will bring bring the pain to them so somehow you have to work work on your past pain and you know work through it and then you can face your future otherwise it will just really affect people you really care yes Be because it's also it's so much in our body so much in our mental so much in our heart so if we're not facing it, it's popping up for sure. It, it's there at moments that we don't want and with people that we don't want them to suffer our pain. So uh, obviously this visualization is a tool, but therapy is also a good tool. Uh, talking to people is good tool. There are also like um, our uh, community uh, services also. Um, just taking one little step is a very good thing. Yeah, I think the audio uh, format is a really good starting point because it's really for a lot of, of our past experience, it's really like for a lot of people, it's very private. We don't really want to open up and talk to anyone, right? We don't even want to think about it ourselves. Yeah. So it's really nice that we can have something that we can listen to by ourselves every day and, you know, try to heal it by ourselves um you know for a certain amount of time and then once we are open and we are ready to you know talk about it and then you know you you can just you know find the right group and right community and then you're gonna get more help more professional helps yes that's exact that's exactly why i made it because not everybody first of all therapy can be expensive so not everybody has access to that and it's so private, it's so, so private. And so, uh, and, and there's also the reason because it, if you t think about sexual trauma, you're such a shame and, and the shame is coming from the abuse. It's, you feel it's yourself, but it's not, it's the abuse that's putting that into, it's putting anxiety in your body. So of course you're going to, you don't want to face that, but it's okay. Like I'm there in the audio with you. It's securing, it's a little safe spot. And you know, you can just open it for like uh, 30 minutes. Then after 
can go back and you can meditate and breathe in. And I also suggest little, little things to take care of yourself, to be soft with yourself that you can do so that after you're able to go back to your normal life and, and slowly to take care of it. Yeah. And for our audience that's in the chat uh, right now, we have over a thousand um, people that's watching our live. And if you want the visual the visualization that you can buy at this link that we put it uh, in our chat box, um, it's really truly a blessing that what Julie is doing right now. Um, I, I truly enjoy it. I decided that I have to do it for 21 days. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I believe that everyone somehow at any point, like we discussed before that this whole abuse of pain, um, that we had, it's not just a limited to like sexual abuse, mm -hmm. um, like the videos that I sent you before, um, what happened, uh, in China for the, um, in the restaurant, right? So yeah. Things like that, sometimes it doesn't, it's even just coming from strangers. That exactly. you, even sometimes, even just when you're driving, right? People are beeping at you or, you know, just being so rude at you and you feel hurt and innocent. Like, what did I do? You know, like, and then you feel hurt. The, those little things, you have to know the tools, how to process and heal yourselves um, immediately, like fast, so that's why I think meditation is a, is a is a really good tool that you can you know process and heal yourself um, at the right time before it pops up like what you mentioned. Otherwise, you're gonna pops up and hurt people around you. Exactly. Yep. And so so you can use the the sexual trauma visualization just by you just switch. You put any pain or any. Uh, verbal violence, uh, physical violence, anything that was very suffering, you can put it there and use it as, as the visualization goes. It, it's a very um, wise choice to choose yourself uh, with the visualization and to do it 21 days uh, is a blessing. It's a blessing for ourselves and for everybody else around. Yeah. So we, if you have any questions for our live stream audience, you can ask us any questions uh, in the chat box. Uh, we have an audience that she texted and she said, meditation gives us constant calmness and energy, helping us to step outside of ourselves and our surroundings and to view everything from a higher level with more clarity and objective activity thus st stimulating the subconsciousness mind creativity and imagination so she said she really loved uh, the meditation uh, topic they were talking now uh, she is doing meditation herself it's it's a blessing meditation is very it's it's such a blessing comes us down um, we connect to more energy that's inside us different thing that we didn't know that was there so it, it's a it's a very much blessing yes so um so for yourself you know how like how often do you do meditation i do it almost every day i try every day to do meditation mm -hmm. um either at night in the or in the morning uh, but i have little uh, rituals uh to to bless my day to bless the people that i love uh I do that every day for sure. Um, and, and I have uh, others like visualization and stuff like that, that I try to do also every day because it, it, it impacts our day. And also if you do it before sleeping, meditation before sleeping is such a blessing. It, it, it gives you better sleep, better dreams, and you're so much more like relaxed the morning after. So my best time is to meditate before going to bed. Oh, can you share a little bit, um, like how you meditate before you sleep? Uh, well, like there's different type, but basically um, you can do it. If you're going to fall asleep in your bed, maybe to sit like straight. And uh, there's no like um, some people like uh, to have their knees up. But me, I don't have that uh, flexibility. So it's basically, no, I don't. <laughs> Just keep everything simple. You just close your eyes. 
you have a straight back and you can be in a, in a chair and that's fine. And it's basically to breathe in and to breathe out as I would say seven seconds to breathe in. And I try to breathe in, in my lower belly. And after you can breathe it out, but you can make the breathe from, go from your belly to up to, till your spine and outside from your mouth or your nose as you prefer. And I, I do at least seven breaths. And after it's basically, if there's any um, thoughts that comes to your mental, it, it's like if you have um, like a, a board, a class board, and you just take a little uh, something to erase it. If something pops up, you erase it and you erase it. And that doing that every day, because we have so much uh, like eagles to work on and every stuff. So at the beginning, 15 minutes of meditation is a success. So we just try and you just try 15 minutes and that's good. But keeping all those mental thought out of the, the mental. And at one point it's going to be clear and you're, nothing's going to pop out. And now, you know, you're at the, the place where you want to be just emptying everything and being just there. And you, you try to like bring it up the, as much as you can. If it's a half an hour, that's good. And if it, I have different kinds of tool also, like I, I can also do mantras and stuff like that, but it, it's basically that that's the simplest thing. And you do 15 minutes of that and you go to bed and it's a wonderful sleep. Wow. So, so it kind of works like um, what you mentioned is like, it's a blackboard and you're putting down your things, your daily things, and then you, you wipe it out one by one. If something pops out, you uh -huh. wipe it out. Yeah, I'm not looking for something, but it, when oh. it pops out, I wipe it out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> interesting. I'm going to try that tonight. Because yeah, it's like, it's a little bit hard for me to fall asleep every night, to be honest. Um, I'm a very like energetic person. So, you know, like for people like me, it's really hard to fall asleep because a lot of things going on when I go to bed, I still like processing a lot of things in my head. I had to get really, really tired to fall asleep. So okay. for me, my, my ritual was kind of like looking at my checklist of my day and, you know, like everything of the day that I did, like check, check, check. And then I feel like, okay, now I close my day because I finished everything. And then I go to bed and I feel relaxed. <laughs> And when you check everything, are you, is it okay? Your mental is good. You go back. Yeah. To sleep really fast. yeah. And then I'll relax. And then I probably just read some books, like entertaining, not like a too much stimulation, but just entertaining some videos or some books that relax and entertaining, you know, and then I would just fall asleep. Wow. That's yeah. good. <laughs> that's very good because you're going back. You're looking, okay. I did that. That's like a, a feedback that's yeah. very good also we yeah. can do that also so you're like okay everything is done feedback tuck, tuck, tuck. it's yeah. good because if something isn't done you can already plan it okay tomorrow like this yeah. is it yeah and, and then yeah for certain things i will move around to tomorrow i'll check okay tomorrow i do i do have these things to do okay so and then i, I know i'm ready for tomorrow so I, now i know i'm ready but sometimes it takes really long for me to go to bed <laughs> okay but you can also because sometimes it's it's usually the mental the mental is so like it's 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 a beast huh? it's really uh, something that we need to control and it's a, a life process so we can just tell okay mental i'm the one that's controlling you mm -hmm. just you know stop you know stop talking i'm and feel at peace yeah i really love your um your idea of taking back the power Yes. Um, I, I really love this point of view because, you know, from my personal experience or um, people around me, like my friends or people that I know, um, a lot of experience that they had either from their previous marriage mm -hmm. or from their pre previous uh, partnership. It's, it's all like when they had a breakup like a breakup relationship, whether it's like dating or marriage or business, right? It's, it's all about how do you take back your power? Because when you break up, you feel like you're losing a, a big chunk of your, your energy. Yeah. And then you try to move on. You feel like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to move on and I find the next person or the next thing to do. 
but you're not. You have to, you know, like get back the other half, the other part to, you know, to be ready to go, to move on. Yeah, you have to to do the the griefing process. To, yeah. to, you have to acknowledge the emotions that are there and let them be at a certain point. And when that is more passing, like there's less griefing, uh, less uh, sorrow and sadness, then you can you can do visualization and you could just imagine the person in front of you and say, even the good stuff you want to take back. Like I, I let, I, I, you were so nice. I'm giving you niceness, but I, I'm also taking the niceness that now I can acknowledge that I have because I was sharing that with you. So, and that can be done, but it cannot be done. I wouldn't be doing that at the beginning when you're When you just separate it, you have to go through the griefing process. And we don't like that griefing process. We want it to be over so soon. Yeah. But but it's it's a blessing. We're moving on and we're growing. So we have to look at the emotions. Emotion is energy and movement. So we don't want to know, okay, why is it in my body? Where is it coming from? And when we're breathing, the emotion is less there. That's mm -hmm. why they always say, breathe, breathe, breathe. You have an emotion. But you, you can... Also, just feel it in your body, and after, just breathe in. And so, it's very to become aware of what's inside you. And emotions are keys; mm -hmm. they're telling you something. Uh, as an example, some, sometimes we're mad at somebody, but usually, when we're when we become mad, is there was a trespassing of our territory, of our room, or something. So the madness here is just to tell us, oh, watch out. This person is a little bit, is in your space. You have to communicate something. And at one point, we don't have to become mad anymore because we're, we're able to communicate. So basically, every emotion is there to tell you a signal. We just have to listen to it. And after, at one point, we, okay, I don't need to be sad anymore. I just need to, I, I know the message now in my body. Don't need this sadness anymore. And I can, but, but that's a, uh, that's a, really working hard with your emotion and stuff. We can just start by recognizing them and acknowledging them. Yeah, it's, the, it's really hard. It takes a long time also. It's not overnight yeah. that, that I know. Like every breakups um, that I personally experienced at least a year or two, <laughs> yeah. whether it's like personal or like business, you know, partnership or whatever, it's like at least a year or two. And then you are ready, you know, to really like think about it, like take it out, put it on the table, you know, face it. And then, you know, like started to work on it and then say, okay, I forgive you. I forgive myself. I'm ready to move on. That's when I'm ready to release it and then move yep. on. Exactly. Yeah. And the one or two years is just, it, it's a nice, beautiful griefing progress. You're learning about more about yourself and uh, yes, it's beautiful. Yeah. So we it, can think it, of it as like, it takes that long for you to grow the other half of you back, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Beautiful, very beautiful. Uh, thank you, Julie, for this wonderful conversation and hour already passed. Time goes so fast. Thank you for receiving me and thank you for all the exchange and everything that we've learned today. It's amazing. Yes, yes. I can't wait to... Uh, See you in Montreal. <laughs> hey, soon, soon. It's coming soon. <laughs> yes. Um, so thank you for our audience who are watching for our live stream. Uh, we thank Julie for her very valuable tools, visualization tools that we shared all the links of her audio and the links of her book. Again, this beautiful mermaid book uh, that we share all the links uh, in the in the box. So make sure that you check it out. Uh, and then uh, we welcome Julie back anytime soon in the future. And then maybe we're going to organize some workshops. Um, so for those who really want to have a personal touch um, to for healing. Yeah, thank you. It will be my pleasure to be back. It's an amazing experience. Yes. Yay. So everyone, good night. And for those who are in China, good morning. I wish you have a splendid night. Bye. Bye. Good night.